this is Marlene with Miami Ghost Chronicles, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Stories of the Supernatural. Wherever you find us, whether it's a video or podcast on your favorite platform, please like and subscribe to us so that you can get notification of when a new show is released. You can also find us on major social media platforms. If you go to MiamiGhostChronicles.com, you can find links to the videos or MP3 files, which you can download and enjoy without commercial interruptions. If you're into classic horror, ghost, and adventure stories, I narrate Nightshade Diary, and you can find links at NightshadeDiary.com. If scary stories are your bag, and listening to encounters with cryptids, ghosts, dogmen, and other weird creatures sends a shiver up your spine, then go to SupernaturalStoryTime.com for links to our weekly podcasts. Noteworthy news about the paranormal world, true crime, conspiracy stories, and anything that is just plain weird can be found at eerie.news or visit the Stranger Than Fiction Stories tab at MiamiGhostChronicles.com. Please subscribe to my newsletter on Substack. Just go to mppelliser.com for a link. I want to thank you for being part of my audience, and I think you are all wonderful. Hi, everybody. It's Marlene. How's everybody doing? Good, I hope. I'm doing well. Everything is really good. Uh, rainy afternoon here in Northern Florida, but that's okay. Uh, I've gotten emails like, why haven't I put out anything about Erie News? Uh, let me, I have a good excuse. Uh, as you know, I'm, I'm finishing up the, the latest book, which is Phantoms of the Follies. And I'm at the end, I'm at the editing part. I'm at the, I'm, I'm, and it's basically absorbed every time that I think, let me go off and write an article or let me go record something on Erie News or let me do this. It's like, wait, but I have to finish this. And it's like one of those black hole kind of things like, now that I'm almost at the end, I want to finish it. And it's, unfortunate. well, fortunately or unfortunately, whatever, it's the part also that requires a lot of uh, attention to details, as in the editing. And I've stopped myself because I've gone back over several things where I want to all of a sudden rewrite it. It's like, no, you can't rewrite this book. So as to, yes, um, even everything else, even my recordings for Nightshade Diary and for Supernatural Storytime, everything has gone on the back. Usually I was doing one of those like every other day as far as to stagger them. Last night, I forced myself to record one for Supernatural Storytime because I didn't want to fall behind on that. But yeah, it's one of those things where, and like I said, I'm hoping by next week I will put out the release date for the book on Amazon. I'm going to put it into October. I'm shooting, shooting for October 4th, you know, but again, that's tentative, but it looks like that's what I'm going for, October 4th or 5th. And I'll probably put a link in the newsletter, you know, if you want to pre-order it or anything like that. And, but yes, that is why I am consumed, okay, with that, because if not like everything else, once you, how can I tell you, your attention's diverted when you're in that, it's like, ah. So anyway, that's why. That's why I will be doing, though, I promise. I'm going to be putting something about eerie news. As far as the chickens outside, everybody's fine. Everybody's good. I got another hen with three other chicks. I got I to gotta videotape that and put it up for you guys. Even though, I'm going to put a link. I am on TikTok just doing chickens. Okay? Chicken East to lay. That's my name. I'm going to put a link to that. And all I do there are chickens. All right? All my adventures in chicken land and Adventures outside when I find snakes eating my eggs. I'm like, uh, see, that's what I'm saying. Go, I'll put the link and find me on TikTok just for that. Anyway, let's get on to the good part, guys. Oh, before I forget, don't forget to sign up for my newsletter. Let's talk about who I have today for a guest. This is the first time that this guest has been on Stories of the Supernatural. Her name is Echo Bodin. She first discovered she was born with psychic abilities and the gift of healing at the age of 17. Her abilities included clairvoyance, which is seeing, clairaudience, which is hearing, clairsentience, which is sensing, and clear, clairgustance, which is smell. She took psychic classes for two years and practiced on friends and family for 12 years before beginning her full-time practice as a psychic healer, ghostbuster, and teacher in 1979. 1981, Echo began teaching classes on psychic development and spiritual healing. She has appeared on numerous national television shows, including Sally Jesse Raphael, Sightings, Beyond with James Van Prague, NBC's The Other Side, Unexplained Mysteries, NBC's Today Show, A&E, and Encounters, Paranormal Borderline, did a feature story on her family calling 
calling them the world's most psychic family. She also has been a guest on numerous radio shows throughout the country, including Coast to Coast. Echo hosted her own cable TV show called New Age Perspectives for two years. She had her own radio show on FM 107 in Minneapolis for three years called Intuitive Living and Paramount Pictures solicited her services for the promotion of the movie Ghost. For 2003 to the present, Echo has been the director of the Center for Intuitive Living, where she teaches numerous classes on spiritual development, living by intuition, ghost busting, psychic development, and laying on hands healing classes. In 2010, she began doing online psychic development and intuition classes. She's a field representative for the Edgar Casey's Association for Research and Enlightenment and has a bi-monthly podcast with Bobby Sullivan called Intuitive Healing. Help me welcome her. How are you doing today, Echo? <laughs> Gosh, hi. It's so nice to be here. Oh, my no, God. It is my that pleasure. Video. Honey, that video you have at the beginning of the show. God, what a Let me tell you something. You know what my I tell my audience, you know what my favorite part is? Looking at Jack Nicholson's face when he goes like this, like I was kissing her, like, oh. Okay. Oh, that was not you? acting, okay? It was like, you can tell this guy, you know, when somebody's like, I'm not acting, I'm really living the moment. Like, man, I know she's not really melting, but I, I was kissing her. <laughs> oh my God, she was so gross. Okay, so how old do you I think Jack Nicholson know. was in that picture? God, he's, I know that that movie was from the 1960s. I don't know. He looks like oh 20, uh, more or less, give or take. Oh, he was such he, that a was, That movie boy. is from, uh, that's a that's a movie from the 1960s that Boris Karloff was in it. And I think oh this my. is one of his really oh. early movies that he did before he got into the one well, more well-known, like Easy Rider and all that other stuff. This was when he okay. was like, almost like an unknown you know how a lot okay. of actors, when you see them, they start off in these horror movies yeah. as yes. the unknown actor. Yeah. Yes. And, um, you know, Aww. this was around, the, I, I don't think it was a yeah. Hammer film, but it was around that time, you know, that the Hammer uh, movies were coming out, horror movies like the, that. And Boris Karloff by then was an old guy. Oh, man. And uh, they would do a lot of like, a, a, a kind of kind of based on an Edgar Allan Poe story, kind of, yeah, yeah. you know, but that kind of deal. But you know how oh. the, the, the wife is not, comes back from the dead. What are those deals? If I remember correctly, that's what the movie was slightly oh, based okay. on. Okay. But okay. yeah, I, I, that's, that's the best part of that intro for me is uh, Jack Nicholson's face of disgust. <laughs> <laughs> God, he, he, looked, he looked great. At, at first I didn't so recognize him, but then yeah. when he was like, what the heck? Uh, it's like so heartfelt, kind of. <laughs> oh, no, I love it. It's like, yeah, lady, I, I, you can pay me to kiss you again. No. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care if you're melting. Sorry, I'm out of here. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Echo, let me let me ask you. I know in the bio it mentions that you discovered you were psychic when you were 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you discover this? Or did you have a suspicion before that? You know what, honey? It was a really <clears throat> different kind of story. Um Okay, so my family, we were all sitting around the dinner table, and one of my brothers got up to go downstairs and practice on his drum set. He was just in the beginning stages of learning to play the drums. So he sounded, you know, rough. And so we're all talking, mom, dad, another brother, a sister, myself. And all of a sudden, this really nice music comes from the den. And we all looked at our dad and he said, I don't know, it must be the record I bought him. And about maybe a minute later, my brother came up the stairs. He was hysterical. And he said, did you hear it? Did you hear it? And we were like, yeah, what was it? And he said, a white figure floated through the door across the room, put its hands on top of my brother's hands and played the music. And he said, I couldn't drop my sticks. I had my eyes closed and I could still see him. And what, I mean, okay, you know, this, none of this was in our life up until okay. that point. Okay. And <clears throat> so my mom was in a prayer group at the time. And one of the women, this was back in 1965. Okay. So, I mean, honey, it, 
back then you had to know somebody who went to a psychic. It was nobody was advertised back then. Absolutely, yes. But this lady had mentioned to my to my mom that she had been to a psychic, and you know she did it, of course, and whispering and mm -hmm. so my mom called her and said could you give me the number of that psychic because we just had a really weird thing happen so the psychic's name was eve olson my mom called mrs olson she says hello Ms. olson my name is may bodine and mrs olson says yes mrs bodine i've been expecting your phone call okay. she said this happened for a reason your son met his guardian angel Dr. Fitzgerald, she said when he was living on earth, he was a drummer in one of his lifetimes. And she said, I need to see you and your oldest daughter for a psychic reading. So mom said, okay, I'll get back to you on that and hung up the phone and told us what she said. Well, what? A guardian angel plays the drums? What? What? Right. And, and then mom and I were like, why does she want to see us? And uh, so mom called her back we both went in for a reading and that's when uh, she told my mom that she would be a well-known psychic someday and that my baby brother Michael who was only eight at the time she said he's just very psychic that's why he is the way he is there's nothing wrong with him and she said and your oldest daughter Echo uh, will be a well-known psychic someday and your daughter Nikki will come into her psychic abilities in her mid forties. So I remember mom coming out of the reading room and she just looked stunned. And so then I went in, oh God, Marlene, this was just a riot. And um, honey, you should have seen. So I'm 17, I'm a senior in high school. I'm shy, uh -huh. I, don't, you know, I don't know what's going on in life. And uh -huh. so I sit down and I go to take this, drink this glass of water that she has on the table. And she says, oh no, no, no. No, 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 dear, don't drink that. That's for the spirits. So honest to God, the whole time she's giving me my future reading, I'm watching the glass of water because I want to see it go down. Okay. Right. You're uh, like, okay. Yeah. Okay. So then she tells me that I was born with all four psychic abilities and with the gift of healing. And she says, you're going to write many books and be on radio and TV. Your name is going to be known throughout the world. And you're going to be a well-known psychic and healer. And she said, you were born with the gift of healing. And I'm just staring at this woman like, who is she talking right, to? Right, exactly. And um, I said two things. I said, okay, two things. One, I don't have any of the stuff you're talking about. And two, I don't want any of the stuff you're talking about. I just want to have a nice, normal life, okay? And she said, well, you can do that in your next life. But in this <laughs> lifetime, you're here to do this. Then she says, as far as the gift of healing, your father is at home with a migraine headache, which really blew me away because he was at home with a migraine. And she okay. said, I have two things to tell you. One, always use white hankies on top of underneath your hands when you're channeling healing. Two, don't forget the healing comes from you, uh, from God. You are just the channel. And she said, I can't tell you anything about it. You'll learn it on your own. And she said, as far as your psychic abilities, a teacher is going to come along sometime in the next six weeks to teach you how to develop your abilities. So... So the whole way home, mom and I are saying, why us? Why do we have to do this weird stuff? And, okay. you know, honey, we, we, okay. So probably a couple of weeks pass. Um, <laughs> you'll get a kick out of this. Okay. So we're thinking, wow, we're going to be famous psychics someday. <laughs> wow. Well, we better get some incense. And so we found there was one new age store in town down okay. in the seediest part of Minneapolis that you would never even want to go into. Okay, but I swear we bought $100 worth of incense. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think that's what psychics use is that incense stuff. And then, of course, we went and bought a Ouija board because, well, all psychics use Ouija boards, right? And uh -huh. that's as much as we knew. Well, so out of the blue, this lady calls my mom one day and introduces herself. She's Bertie Torgerson. She's a spiritualist minister. Her spirit guides gave her the name of eight people in the Twin Cities, 
and she is supposed to teach us how to develop our abilities. She said, my mom's name and my name were on her list. She gave us her address, said, I expect to see you here next Thursday night. And she hung up the phone. So mom and I discussed this and mom said, all right, we're going to go one time and we're just going to see what this is all about. And then we're going to forget about all of this. And I said, good. So we went and honey, all these other people were just like us. They're, we're all looking at each other like, why are we here? And, and, and we're all normal. What's going on? <laughs> honest to God, about as normal looking people as you can get. And, but you know what? That night when Bertie explained what psychic abilities were, I thought, well, well, yeah, I see pictures that come true, but everybody does that. Well, yeah, I hear, I get voices in my head that later come true, but everybody does that. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, I, you know, and right. honey, the more she talked, I thought, well, of course I have that stuff, but everybody has that stuff. And then honestly, when I went to school the next day and I asked my girlfriends, I said, okay, do you guys do this stuff? And I told them, and they all just stared at me like they had no idea what I was talking about. And so slowly it kind of went in my brain that, oh, maybe I have something. I don't know, but it really, oh, and So when we got home that night, uh, I told my dad, now I visualize this six foot, four and a half German man laying in bed. He's got uh, a cloth on his head. And so I went up to him and I said, dad, um, the psychic said that I was born with the gift of healing. So can I just put some hankies on your head and channel healing to him? Oh my God. And he said, "Uh, just don't hurt my head. So I said, Okay, so I get the hankies out, put them on my dad's head, and then I put my hands on them, and I'm, and my mom's standing right next to me. And so, Marlene, honestly, honey, all of a sudden they heated up like little heating pads, and I thought, what the hell? And I said to my mom, okay. they're really hot. And then they started to just tremble all on their own. And I said, they're trembling. And so, I mean, and then, poof, everything stopped. Hands got cool, took my hands off, and my dad said, well, I'll be damned if my headache isn't gone. And I was like, ah, I mean, that was the good news, but that was the bad news, because maybe this psychic was telling me the truth. That's how it got started, honey. That's how it all got started. Let me tell you, and it's, and it makes you wonder if really that, that vision of what happened when your brother was drumming really was, it was just not for him. You know, it was like, yeah, amen, amen. I know that was the triggering event that opened the, and did your mom continue also? Yes, honey. She was a professional psychic. She was also a, in her day job, she was a chemical dependency counselor. And Mm -hmm. then at night she'd go home and she would do three, four readings every night for people. And she, uh, she, she had quite a clientele. We never advertised. We've never advertised. Um, mm-hmm. It's just been word of mouth. And-, and what happened with her? Was she, because obviously she was already, she had, be prior to that, did she ever, was she, or was she like you, like, oh, I know these things, but I thought everybody was aware of this. She was like that too, honey. She, you know, I remember when I was a kid saying to her, mom, how do you always know stuff? And, uh-huh, okay. that, and she said, well, it's my intuition. And right. so my dad, oh my God, he would make such fun of her. And yeah, that stupid intuition thing. And, but honestly, Marlene, but she was right on everything. She knew everything going on with all of us kids, with my dad. Um, and so. Right. And that. Yeah, and a lot of I know you know a lot of people say, oh, it's the mother thing, you know, she knows what's going on with her yeah. kids, kind of deal. Yes, but no, um, you know, when I was, I think I was about seven, and I said to her, "Mom, I want to be like you. I want to know stuff." And she said, "Okay, well, it's your intuition." And she pointed to my stomach, and she said, "Okay, it's in there." And I'm seven. I'm like, "What? What's in there?" And but. Every time I had to make a decision, she would say, because I would go to her and say, like, Mom, Debbie 
wants to know if I can come to her slumber party on Friday. And my mom would point to my stomach and she'd say, well, what does it say in there? And I go, mom, it doesn't say anything. And she would say, yes, it does. It's either saying yes to you or no to you. And I didn't know what she was talking about. It took me, I don't know how long to finally go, wait a minute. Oh, I think I do know what it means to hear the intuition. And so it was really cool. By the time we okay. got to psychic class, both of us had really good, strong relationship with our intuition. So Bertie taught us that, you know, when you get a vision, you can go to your intuition mm -hmm. and say, okay, well, now I just saw this. Does it mean this? Does it mean this? Does it mean this? And so I learned at an early age how to work the two together so that intuition could confirm or deny. No, it's that's you're not interpreting. You know, Matt, I, I imagine a lot of people have that question. How do I know it's my intuition versus my imagination? I know, honey. You I know, get it all the time. You think of something. I bet. Yeah. I get it all the Where time. people just people is like. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I and I tell everybody, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, because of course, as human beings, sometimes we're always looking for the proof. And I say, you know mm -hmm. what? Sometimes people follow their intuition, even when it doesn't make sense. And they dodge a bullet, you know. And you yeah. never know you dodged the bullet because you dodged it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? I know. I know. You know, people always say to me, well, if if it's intuition, why doesn't it tell me why? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know how many times people, like, they'll get a feeling, uh, a knowing. Oh, you're walking out the door and your intuition says sweater. And you think, sweater? Why? I don't need a sweater. Sweater? I don't need a sweater. And you leave. And you get to wherever you're going and the people have the air conditioning on full blast and you're freezing while you're there the whole time. Yeah. And it's the, the problem for all of us is that intuition doesn't say take a sweater because the people are going to have the air conditioning up really high and you're going to freeze all afternoon. It just says yeah. sweater. And so I think that's where we all get stuck is that. Yes. Oh, why? Why? Why should I quit my job today? Why should I? You know, honey, I think so often about the people in 9-11 who, mm -hmm. you know, were sitting at their desk and intuition said, go across the street, get a cup of coffee or something. It said yes. something to get them yes. up and out of there. And yeah. a lot of people probably on the other side said, I knew I was supposed to move. I knew I was supposed to get out of there. Yes. But and you hear you. I, I heard that there was a couple of people that didn't go into work that day. Yep. Yep. Because yep. of it, not because I was sick, but something told them don't go in. Yeah, they didn't. And it makes it exactly like what you just said. How many had that same feeling or that yep. same thought? But they were like, oh, I'm just imagining things. Exactly. I, I, or how many people said, oh, my God, that I've been working on this meeting. We're going to have the meeting today. Exactly. It's really important. I got to go. And intuition is saying, no. No, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Stay home. Yes. Yeah, honey. I think. Uh, I, uh, I tell yeah. everybody, and I, and and I, you know, I, I've said it. I say, you know what? You know, I'm, let's use an example of a, you know, let's say a plane crash where people okay. sometimes you've heard you hear people saying the last minute. Some people say, I'm not. I don't know why, but I'm not getting on there. Yep. And I say, yep. I wonder how many people had that same feeling, but they still got on. And of course, you never know about it because unless they told somebody that mm -hmm. they might have had some maybe for unknown reasons something about don't get on this plane but they did i know and oh. of course there's no way to you know qualify um, oh uh, what an awful position to be in you yeah, know because we don't trust i think our the intuition yeah. thing is and i, I want to say especially for the analytical personalities the worst it's the very worst. difficult to yes. do something that's so flighty how's yes. that yes yeah, honey, that's, yeah. and they have the toughest, the toughest time with intuition because they want the facts. You give me the facts, yes. I'll trust it. If I don't have the facts, I'm not going to do it. And exactly. Oh, what exactly. a tough way to learn. I got to make, I got to justify this to myself yes. somehow in my brain. Yeah. yeah. And honey, and about, people, like, let's say you have to justify it to your husband. Say yeah. to your husband, well, I just know we're not supposed to take this trip. Well, how do you know? Oh, 
give me some yes. facts. Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. For yes. People. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you hear today, Queen Elizabeth the second passed? I, and... I, must, I must have gotten 20 things on my phone today about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. it was like, you know, 96 years, that's a good long life. You know, people yeah. was like, yeah, you know what? I wish, <laughs> I wish I could. And she looked like she was pretty active all the way to the, you know, to the right. end, till her passing. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's off to her. She lived a long life. Yep. That's did something she, that did, we could all wish for. I know, sweetheart. Did they say what she passed from? No, they're being kind of very general. But I know yeah. well, a couple right. of days ago, they were pointed, there was a picture where her hand was blue, like bluish. And... To me, I'm looking at that. I'm thinking, okay, that's what circulation or, or you know, oh. but her, she had like, like the top of her hand was bluish, bluish gray. Oh, that's not good. No, it's not. You know, maybe heart problems, you know, your circulation, oh, yeah. your heart's not pumping the way it should. Okay. I'm thinking at 96, everything's got to be worn down by then, you know, oh, everything is. God. Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. They were, um, and of course, and, and I was surprised because I had always heard that her grandson, William, was supposed, but no, her son, mm -hmm. Charles, is now King Charles. Because I had always heard that he was being bypassed and she had said, no, oh my God. I, I, no, they're saying that, no, the one that now is King Charles is her son. So there you go. Wow. So it's uh, the, yeah, she's uh, wow. almost 100 years of, uh, but yeah, that's, yeah. that's uh, yeah. you know, one of those things of... Um, that's very interesting. If you want to say it, you know, because you know that at towards the, uh, what, a week ago, the thing was about uh, Diane's passing, you know, the mystery of, yeah. of uh, yeah. Prince Di. Yeah. And then yeah. now, you know, we have this thing with uh, Queen Elizabeth. And, I mean, yeah, how, old, how old is Charles? Do you know? He's, I heard it's 72, oh. something like that. Yeah, he's not. Yeah, well, because it, people don't realize people are living longer. You know, back bef once upon a time, people yeah. had a shorter lifespan. Their children, as in heirs, were younger. Oh. But you know, honey, he could. I yeah. mean, look at his parents; they both died late nineties. He could live another twenty years. Wow! Isn't yes. that something? Yes, yes, it's it's yeah. it's, it's, it's very interesting. Ah, well, you know, they must be getting great medical care, whatever it is, because wow. her husband, Philip, Prince Philip, the consort, he yep. died pretty much advanced in age as well. So yep. there you go. And uh, very interesting. You know, let's see what, what happens now. But there's a lot yeah. of things and interesting things going on in the UK as well. But yeah, it's it's uh, one of those things that you look at it and you know how you always in the back in the back story of your life, you always have certain figures, historical figures that have always been there for me. Yeah. Queen Elizabeth yeah. has always been, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. over in the, in the UK and that's that's yep. done. So I there know. you go. So I let know. me ask you something. Um, Echo, since you've been doing this for so long. And you know, yep. I hear a lot about children now. Whether they, whether they call them the the star children, the indigo children, is it that we're getting more in, is psychic kids, or have there always been psychics all along? Just that they, like you said, it wasn't like it is now. Sometimes people were like, "I'm not talking. I'm not going to say I'm psychic." Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes I get that feeling. You know, they want to make it sometimes sound, and I'm not. I don't know. This is just me no. saying, "Oh, mm -hmm. like there's more psychics." And I think I think they were here all along as in yeah. but people it was just right. kept it in the background for that various makes, reasons that makes sense to me it does what you're saying i think i think that's a really good point because they do keep saying oh look at the gifted children coming in but really yeah. honey, yes. i think now we know what these gifts are before we didn't really nobody talked about no. them Rel no. religion always made them like a bad sure. thing to have and so mm -hmm. i think Times have changed, boy, I tell you. Um, but I think it's pretty yes, cool they, that it's out in the open, you know. We don't have to hide course. it and we don't have to be ashamed of it. And I don't know. I I don't know. Yeah, I agree with you. Let I, me ask something, Echo. When you were doing your psychic work, did you yep. ever do, because I, uh, I've seen some people that do the medium thing, which is uh, basically communicating with the people who have passed on. Did yep. you ever do work in that field? Yes. You yes. Know, I've done a lot okay. of work with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And yeah. what was your experience with that as far as, um, 
because I know how can I say it? There's there's always that that two two sides of the coin with that. There's people that saying it's a very positive thing, and then there's other people say you got to be real careful when you do that, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yes. Um, I've been through both experiences when I was younger. Okay. I didn't know what I was doing and uh, spirits would come into my body and I'd let them talk through me. And, uh, and then I had a, a bad experience uh, with a, a spirit, a female spirit who she came into half of my body okay. and I didn't really understand it. I didn't know what was okay. So I was teaching a psychic class and I wanted to show my students what channeling was like. Okay. And so, there, there was this male spirit that would come into my body from time to time, really nice man. And he didn't freak me out and he would always leave. And he was very uh, respectful of, you know, not affecting my body in any way. It was a nice experience. Okay, so I showed my students this. Well, that night he stepped out of my body and I saw him go back over to the other side. But then right after that, I started to have really bad headache on the right side of my body. And I okay. just thought, well, oh, this is really weird. And um, so it was like that for two days where I, I just couldn't, I, I didn't know. I, I felt like I was somebody else, but I was me. So I went to the psychic that, that was kind of a teacher for me. And she, when I walked up to her house, she said to me, so who's the lady that you're that's walking in half of your body? And I said, what? And she said, yeah, there's some lady walking on the half side of your body. And she said to me, do you have bad headaches? And I said, yeah, I'm having a really bad headache, but only on the right side. And she said, yeah, this lady was killed with a blunt force trauma to her head. And so she said, come on, I go, we got to get her out of there. So I mean, she worked on me, did a healing on me, and she pulled this lady's soul out of mm -hmm. the right side. And Marlene, like, just like that, I was like, back to normal. Head okay. was, headache was gone. And honey, after that, I just said, that's it, no more. And then I, I thought, you know what? This guy that would come and talk, mm -hmm. I said to him, you can stand right here and talk to me. You don't have to come in okay. anymore. I'm not going to let any more people in my body. And he always did. He would come and he would just stand here and he would tell me what to say and I would say it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I was going to ask him is I've heard, and I don't hear it recently, but, uh, you know, what they, was, uh, mediums that had what they call controls, which is, you know, somebody on the other side that basically was like a, a, a bouncer, for lack of a better word, uh -huh. you know, where they would um, basically like when that lady tried to get in, uh -huh. like just drop in, like, they kind of like referee. Did you ever have anything like that? Or it almost sounds like that man became that in a way. Yeah, you know? he did. You know, <clears throat> when I went back to my class the following week, mm -hmm. I told them what had happened. And my students said, oh, my God, I wonder where that lady went that was standing behind you the whole time. <laughs> okay. And they said that they thought she disappeared because she okay. they couldn't see her anymore okay. after the guy went over to the other side. So um, I've also, and my teacher said, you just tell, ask your guides, guard me, protect me. Okay. I don't want okay. any more of this. And I really- What, did, what do you think she wanted? Do you think she knew she was dead or she was just trying to get somebody to like, she like said, what happened to me? I, it really felt like she just wanted to be in a body again. Really? Okay. Yeah. It, it, but she didn't, there was not a good vibe with this lady. It was oh, just, I'm sure, I'm sure that. Nuts up and i don't know i didn't even let her stick around to explain anything to me it's right 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 and and that's i guess that's what i was referring to that they say that sometimes people start doing opening themselves up to channeling without really knowing what they're doing mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. then they get themselves into predicaments because yeah yes. partially like what you're just describing because yeah. what comes around is not really the best and that's mm -hmm. that's maybe a good idea why people should let me ask you what do you teach your students when you know in your classes as far as what how to handle those situations well or what? i'm really i mean i tell my students you put your foot down you ask your guides to protect you 
Don't mm -hmm. let anybody into your body. They don't need to be in your body. They can okay. stand right next to you and tell you whatever they want to say, but don't do it. You don't have to do it. Okay. So, yeah. I'm right. Just... That thing about once a, because I know that they used to be more common many years ago where you, people would channel and, you know, the, yes. the, the spirit would yes. take over and talk to them. And, yes. and, uh -huh. and I'm thinking to myself, well, what, what, you know, it's, it's almost like, you know, it's almost like you're on the honor system. I hope you, you got to leave, <laughs> you know, and this know. is not your body kind of deal. I know. Um, yeah. yeah. No. I... Let me ask you what, what do you say, uh, and I'm gonna and, and I put this out there and I'm gonna emphasize this again. And we were talking about before we started rolling about being older. I tell people, you know what? You know, everybody talks a lot about when people are young or the kids have become psychic. And I said, you know what? There's a slew of people that as you get older, you've been yeah. psychic, but you get to the age where you don't care anymore what anybody thinks. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm where people start deciding to develop their psychic abilities yeah. or you know, how how's the come out of the closet with it? Yep. Because either, you know, when they were younger, maybe like you said, they're married, they have kids, they're just too busy or they're like, oh, my God, I don't want to be known as that person. Yeah. And then you get to the certain age where you've had these abilities all along. Yep. And then you get to the point where I don't care <laughs> who, who thinks what about it. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to go. I'm going to go forward with this. You yes. know. Yes. Um, yeah. Do you come across those scenarios with any yes. of the, the people that come to you? Yes. Yes. I can't tell you how many older mm -hmm. and i'll say let's say from 60 on yes are coming and taking classes now because they're saying you know i had this when i was younger and i shut it off because it scared me or because i didn't want my husband to know or i didn't mm -hmm. want my family to know i didn't want my kids to think i was crazy yeah. and they're coming back now or they're coming now and saying i don't care anymore i want to develop this I want to understand right. this part of myself. So yeah, I'm I'm seeing a lot of that. Right. They don't. It's that that okay. You know that thing about I don't care who thinks what about me. I who, yes. yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay. If you want to think yeah. I'm nutty, okay. So I'm nutty. Big deal. What are you gonna yep. do about it? You know. Yep. You know. And I yep. understand also that that's become more mainstream with all these paranormal shows and you know and everything. And because um, I can tell everybody, like when I was growing up, Hans Holzer was the only one that was basically yes. doing. The books and you know he had a couple of mediums that he would work with like Sybil yep. Leak and uh okay. what was it Patricia was it Garrison I can't remember now her I name can't remember. and he had like two or three which is the ones that he worked with and but that was about the extent of it all right That's but it's right. become much more mainstream and acceptive and there was always you would hear stories among people in the family you know you have one or a couple of family members or that family member was like that person knows things you know yep yep, yep. yep. that kind of deal Yes. Feel. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. You know, honey, and I it's hear very people... interesting when people. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I hear no, no, people. You were gonna... I hear people refer to that one relative, Crazy Aunt Elsie. You know, Crazy Aunt Elsie always knew what was going to happen. Uh, you know, Crazy Uncle Fred used to make predictions, um, and yeah. we thought we were crazy. This is the kind of thing I hear from people. Well, I used to yes. hear from people, but now people, it's changing. It's changing a lot. Yeah. Let me ask you, and I know because you, you're working with the Edgar Casey Foundation. Um, do you, what, what, what do you think about reincarnation? Totally believe in it. Absolutely okay. believe in it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The I reason mean, why I ask I you is it's, 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 that's why I, you know, I asked you because I know Edgar Casey definitely believe you know that was part of his yeah. teachings yeah yeah honey yeah. you know what it's the only thing that makes sense to me it's the only thing that makes sense to me instead of believing in a god that you know says well you're going to get to have cancer you get to be a millionaire you get to be mm -hmm. crippled you get to be uh it's like no that oh god it drives me nuts um but I didn't believe it in the beginning when my okay. teacher talked about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now, no doubt, no doubt. The, the reason why I asked you is that, you know, I used to do hypnotherapy for many years. And one of the things I did was past life, past age and past life regression. And I would okay. always have the people that would come in like, you know, they imagined a certain thing. I know I lived, you know, and then I would have people saying, um, you know, it'd be surprising how many times they would regress 
into past lives that they had no <laughs> connection to. They were startled. Yeah. Yes. You know. Yes. Oh, you yes. mean I wasn't like Scarlett O'Hara at Terra? No. You're a Greek sailor knitting a net. You know, yes. I've had that. You know, and people, um, in other words, that I would get questions like, do you believe in it? And I said, look, sometimes people come up with stuff in these regressions that mm -hmm. if you if if you would think, OK, it's their imagination or something, you know, some story that they've got going around in their head, they would come up with some some totally different scenario, by the way. Yeah. OK. Yes. 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 That they themselves were startled. They're yes. like, I've never knew or have any connections or thought I had anything to do with any of this. Yes. yes. They would come out of these, uh, you know, once I brought them out of hypnosis, they'd be like with this look on their faces that was priceless. Because yes. they just, they were like, I, you know, I, like that one, I had one regression, a lady, she says, I, I could, I was, she was by the sea. She says, I could smell the ocean. Mm -hmm. I could smell it. You know, and I want people saying, do you believe it? And I say, I don't have any proof of it. But mm -hmm. in the um, in the instance of people suffering from phobias, depending yes. on their ability to see certain lifetimes, because some yes. of them, it's like whatever happened was so horrid. You can't you're not, you're not your mind is never going to allow you to witness that again. All yes. right. Yes. But yes. if it yes. is, there are instances where witnessing that whatever happened in that life lifetime will yeah. abruptly end the phobia yes okay yes. i agree and i would have people say well what's a fear i said a fear is when you know what caused your fear a phobia is when you have a certain fear with and you don't know why yep. all right that's right yeah and so i would say whether you want to say it's the person's imagination or whether the the reincarnation theory holds true it had mm -hmm. it has results mm -hmm. you know yep. that's right um and i have had clients that were so wigged out for lack of a better word that even though they came back once and it startled them because it kind of shifted their paradigm so thoroughly yes as to yeah yes. you mean what the, you mean that this is like what okay no 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 i i can't handle this <laughs> you know? i know I because know. they went on a lark they would go on a lark yes. and then the experience turned into something else for them yes 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 Yes. And, uh, right. you know, and I mean, I know there's a lot of different theories about people reincarnating in groups uh, about, yeah. you know, whether it's trauma or, you know, that uh, schoolhouse kind of thing that that's why we reincarnate is to learn certain lessons or expiate yep. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. certain things that maybe we did in a past life kind of deal. Yes. You know, yes, yes. That, that pattern you know, thing. You know, honey, I didn't like I said, I didn't believe in it for a while but when I started doing readings for people I remember the first time it ever happened this lady mm -hmm. came and she said I don't know why my husband and I have such a difficult time with each other it just doesn't make sense to me okay so I closed my eyes and I was asking and I started getting pictures of sometime in history and they were dressed what they, they had different clothing on and he was a doctor and she was a nurse and he was an alcoholic and she was a raging codependent nurse and mm -hmm. um but honey in my head my head was arguing with the whole picture no this can't be happening this is not no i don't believe in past lives no i don't know why i'm seeing this and then I saw a date, you know, like 18, 19. I'm like, no, no, this is not happening. I just fought it. And I, okay. I don't know why, but, but then when I explained to her everything that I was seeing, she, uh, well, actually she started crying and she said, oh my God, you just explained our relationship to a T and why okay. they were having so many problems. And, okay. um, uh, and honey, after that, it just, Almost every time I did a reading, a past life would come forward after that. Yeah, yeah. what? Yeah, all it's, the time. It's really interesting because, you know, a lot of people think that that scenario that you just explained there about past lives, yeah. Yeah. sometimes, believe it or not, with that resolution, it marks the end of the relationship. People don't realize that sometimes the end is a, a beginning. They think, oh, that's not my soulmate. It's like, no, you've just yeah. been freed from that pattern yep 
Yep, exactly. That exactly. now you can move on. You guys have finally figured it out. Yes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and I think that sometimes happens, and I don't know if you've seen it. And I know there's a little bit of an extreme where you see these couples and people that kill one another yeah. or, you know, like um, it, that you're like, how did this happen? And things like that. And it's like sometimes when you look at the reincarnation, yeah. that there's this, they're, they're repeating something that obviously they're not beyond, right. but that they, that, that, mm -hmm. that, that's the history is there. Yep. Um, yep. And then at some point you're hoping that they're going to, they're, you know, however they're going to figure it out and, yeah. Right. And I tell, and I tell people, even if it, it, at some lifetime you're able to walk away from this other person, yes. break the relate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm gonna walk away. That is breaking the what's the word for it? Karma. <laughs> you know the uh, honey. The pattern. The pattern. Because that's what the spirits are always saying is, <clears throat> we've all got so many patterns, and okay. so that's what we're here to break. Is a lot of these patterns yes. that keep us stuck, and so that's what you're talking about is. Let me ask you something, Echo. Um, when it comes to free will, because I know a lot of people will say, especially when it comes to psychic matters, yep. how much is destined versus how much is your free will? No. How do you think your free will, now that you, you've... I, I know, you know, some people say, is it you're going to ultimately have that destiny or does your free will figure in there somehow? Well, free will does figure into our life path. But, you know, the funniest part is that, especially for the older souls, because they were part of the planning stages. So if an older soul comes in <clears throat> and then they decide, no, I don't want to do that. It's like they're going against a, pa a plan they themselves created. So okay. it, it's like, come on, guys, wake up, pay attention. What does it feel like intuitively? And, you know, <clears throat> like... When we're on the wrong path, it feels yes. icky. It just feels yes. icky. Like, uh, and um, and then when we get on the right path, wow, feels really good and life giving. And but <clears throat> you know, I've I've met people who have gone against what they came in to do. Okay. And. And, the, and they live with this kind of icky feeling always of I'm not what I'm supposed to be. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. And they, they don't know how to change it. They don't know how to shift it. It's like they've gotten, they've created another pattern of just the same old, same old. And so they'll just come back again. I don't know. Right, it's, a bummer. Right. it's a bummer. Yeah. They want, they're so stuck mm -hmm. on the, uh, you know, whether it's because, let's say, that's the, how they make their money. How's that? Or yeah. something, yeah. whatever. Or yeah. I've been doing this too long to yes. change. Yeah. And which I imagine yeah. ultimately exactly. comes down to a lack of trust for yourself, exactly. for your, your intuition. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, and, mm -hmm. and, and I also agree. And I'm sure this has happened to everybody. When you're on the right track, oh, doors open for you in the most yeah. unexpected ways. Know. You know? I, know, I know. It's so cool. I know. Yeah. And then and when you're on the on the flip side of that is oh, um, when things awful. are not really you. And by the way, this is not to say that sometimes you have obstacles that you need to overcome. I'm not saying, but usually <laughs> it's like, man, everything is working. You know, talking about walking into a headwind. Yeah. You know, yeah. it becomes yeah. echo. I know I'm looking at I'm keeping an eye on the clock and I know you got to do Ooh, some classes you, before Linda. we thank go. You. What is the what for my podcast listeners? What is the website they can go to? Uh, they can go to uh, echobodine.com and okay. everything that I can do or that I do is on the website, honey. And it's, it's, uh, okay. it's a really nice website. It isn't hard to figure out at all. So, yeah. Okay. So they, they, what you've got the classes, everything that you do is on that website then. Yep. 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 And okay. uh, the new book, the new book is called how to live a happily ever after life. And it's, you know, honey, with all the ghost bustings that I've done in the past with my brother, um, we always go in when we meet a ghost, we ask them, why are you here? Why, why don't you go to the right. other side? And mm -hmm. that's what the book about is about, is the six main reasons that we have found why souls choose to remain earthbound. 
So uh, for all the folks out there that love ghost stories, right. um, I highly recommend it. It's, it's right. a really good book about death and yeah, yeah. heaven and heaven. So, you know, what? and, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, and I've said it before, I moved up here like less than a, you know how you, sometimes you hear about these ghosts of people that stick around because this was their house. Yes. You know, we're like, man, why? And I said, you know what? I moved up here two years and I had my own, I didn't want to let go of my stuff. I basically I had to force myself to throw away a lot of my things. Yeah. And I said, okay, if I'm doing this, and, but I can imagine if you've lived 40 years in a certain house, <laughs> so maybe you even built it. I know, I know. I'd, I'd be like, you'd have to tear me out of there with a crowbar. Oh, you know, know. and know. even, even oh. then now I've opened some boxes and I look and I'm like, why did I bring this stuff? I know, <laughs> I I know. What am I doing with this junk? You know? So it, to me, it's like sometimes it gives you a perspective how sometimes maybe a soul gets hung up. Yep. Yep. That's right. On not wanting to to move on and say, this is my house. What do you mean? No. What are those people doing in here? Get them out of here. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. That has happened. Yes. Many times. Echo, it has been such Ooh. a pleasure to speak to you. Uh, what is your book? Uh, is, is it released or is it yet to be released? Yeah. It, it was released August first so it's been out okay. for about a month and uh okay. it's good it's it's and it's gonna come out in audio book in september oh, which is really okay. cool. yeah i'm really excited Excellent. about that so absolutely um, yep check it out honey check it out of God, course you're so of course. fun marlene you're yeah so you fun are to too with, honey. oh yeah, yeah we i mean i'm here mean, like i'm like i was like okay how's I that? can i have her back so that we could talk about the book and we could talk about why dead people don't leave <laughs> And you know, uh, you know, I know, I know. God. all Thank those you. uh weird intuitions, you know, whether they're positive or and all those things that people yeah. I'm sure everybody goes through them because I think we all have intuition up to some point, some more than others, you yes. know. Yes. So, yes. but yeah, it has been yeah. an absolute pleasure. And of course, I want to wish you the best Thank of luck you. in all your projects. And I will be contacting so you can come back and we can talk about your book, okay, honey. Thank you, okay. thank you, thank you. Hey, sweetheart, okay. take care. Bye. 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 Bye bye. 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 Oh, oh. oh, let me tell you. That's true. It's true. Yes, like everything else, all my guests, but especially with it's this is this lady's been around. She has, she's, you know, um, no offense to you, you younger people, but you know what? You appreciate when somebody has been around to see the development of because people think you know with all these paranormal shows that what they blossomed what in the last 15 or 20 years it has but it's always been there but it's always was a you know when you want to call it, well there was a new age movement and all that other stuff but even that predating you know some people have seen you know those those shows like sightings and you know unsolved mysteries and but even before that you know when like i said like you know hans holster he would write his books and all these things um, and she's absolutely right. Yeah, there's always been psychic people. And of course, you know, back after the Civil War and the turn of the centuries, you know, you had that that thing of the spiritualism because, of course, you know, you had so many deaths after the Civil War, after World War One, And there was this, like, for lack of a better word, a demand for uh, communicating with the dead. You know, people had lost loved ones, sons, fathers, brothers, uncles, you name it. And um, it kind of flourished, in other words. And, and of course, back then, I'm sure people have seen where, um, yeah, uh, at that time, psychics would produce ectoplasm. And I don't know, I'm glad that went by the wayside because I don't get it. But anyway, and, you know, and of course, everybody's heard that a lot of... Um, People were basically, they, they were fake mediums, you know, and, and of course they were taking advantage that if they had somebody that's coming to them because they were, they had lost a loved one. People, you know, when you're hurting that kind of pain, you're willing to set aside your skepticism that you would normally have because hopefully you were going to be able to speak to a loved one that's passed on. But, and I've said this before, I think a lot of the, not all, not all. But a lot of the mediums and or slash psychics that were uh, like Houdini, who busted a bunch of them or people that were outed, I think some of these people were genuine psychics. However, however, when you have to produce an ability 
because this is how you pay for the roof over your head and the food on your table. Psychic ability sometimes, like the supernatural, is not an on-demand thing, okay? There's some days that you could be more highly psychic, okay? Versus other days, you know, you were tired, you know, or physically tired, all right? In other words, I think a lot of times, a lot of psychics held sessions and, and they had to basically fake it, whatever the faking was, because they were just tired and they, they were like, you know, it's, hey, every time somebody comes in, they expect that they're going to, something's going to happen. Otherwise, you're going to lose your clientele. All right. So they had a backup plan. You know, they had the fake backup plan for the days where my psychic is done. You know, or I'm a, I'm, I'm an, I'm, a, I'm ebbing on this, or hey, I'm getting over a cold, or I'm just tired, or. And, and this is the thing, most people, and and, and, and this is gonna go for you know, I'm sure everybody's seeing all these medium shows where they channel the people's loved ones and all that, folks. You know, a lot of times, you know, everybody thinks that sometimes relationships with the person that's looking for the communications and the dead person were peachy. Sometimes they're not. Okay. You could have a psychic doing a channeling supposedly or trying to chat on behalf of this person who's paying the money. And what if the deceased person is like, I don't want to talk to that person. I don't want to deal with that person. Maybe the person that's coming to you is not telling you the whole truth. Maybe they have a guilty conscience over something that they did, but they're not telling you as a medium, hey, you know what? I really wronged this person, and that's really why I want to talk to them. Or maybe I want to know, where did they, hey, would that, that nice, uh, you know, bracelet, gold bracelet, where'd you put that? But in other words, and sometimes you'll have the, the person on the other side saying, F you, I don't want to talk to you. You're a jerk, or we're a jerk. Okay, or you were a witch. I'm using that instead of the B word. Um, and I don't want to have anything to do with you. Figure it out, you know, do your own thing. Now, can you imagine if you're a medium, especially back in those days, like I said, where it, this was like a cottage industry or more, you know, when you had this person coming and paying you money, what are you going to say? Even if you were psychic and you had the dead person whispering in your ear, tell them I don't want to talk to that person because this person was a real horrible person to me. What are you going to do? Turn around and tell this person who just handed you some, hey, <laughs> you're, the dead person says you're a jerk <laughs> to get out of here because they have want nothing to do with you. Okay, yes, you know how that would go over, right? So the point being that I think that a lot of these earlier psychics were psychic. It's just that they faked it because, hey, I got to pay my bills. Not all of them were fake. And yeah, there was a few charlatans. I'm sure there was like, and like I said, people, people in that were grieving or could be easily deceived because it's like, you know, you don't want to see what's in front of you, you know, or they give you some really generalized feedback and it's like, oh, it's Aunt Susie, whatever. And it's not Aunt Susie, but they give you some real generalized feedback that they, you know, people in grief will construe it however it fits that that's going to soothe their heart. Uh, but anyway, flash Fast forward a hundred years or so, more or less, and here we are where, um, you know, there's been a renaissance, if you want to call it, of where the paranormal and, you know, psychic stuff. And again, and I'm glad she mentioned what she did about the experience that she had when she was channeling. And basically she had somebody step in and without permission, all right, and take over. And she was she was describing was she was manifesting physically what what had killed this woman. All right, and again, this 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 dissipates this idea that all these people that have passed on are going to. And I say it again, you know, if if you've passed on and you've made your way to where you're going, you're not hanging out out here. You either spiritually were ready for it, you're gone, you're, bye. All these ones that are hanging out on the lower planes, which, uh, uh, you know, if they could, they jump all the psychics they could, like, hey, they, 
they've got problems. They got problems ranging from I'm don't know I'm dead, but why doesn't well, nobody talk to me? Okay. Either because violent or you know they died under the influence of drugs, anesthetics, violent trauma to the brain. You know, last thing I remember, you know, whatever. You know, the ones that fear hellfire, even though you know they or feel if not the pro, they just fear hell. By the way. Some people fear it. Some souls fear it because they really were SOBs. They really, like, and even in their psychopathic minds, if that's what they were, they know, man, I did some really horrible things. And then there's other people that through whether religious beliefs or they grew up in that, they really, maybe they never did anything really horrible, but they were brought up to believe that, hey, I either wasn't religious or I did certain things that were like sinful and man, I'm going to go to a hot place. Hey, everybody's reality, perceptions are reality, even when you're dead. And they're like, uh, you know what? I'm not really happy here, but at least it's not the hot place. Uh, I think I'll stick out. You know, all these people that are floating around, all right? These are the ones that usually are your first, <laughs> when you're psychic, that jump on the, try to jump on the bandwagon. Is they're right there. <laughs> like that lady was, that went into her, she was giving her that headache. God knows. Maybe she didn't realize she was dead, like, you know, somebody push her on the head unexpectedly. Sometimes they kind of, but they want to tell somebody what happened to me. Or look, I need to tell you that that guy down the street, that neighbor of mine, he bashed me over the head, took me and buried me in his backyard. Okay. In other words, just be the, 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 the state of death doesn't give you this automatic enlightenment of it's, it's all good. Mm -hmm, and I'm off with the angels, you know, especially depending on the circumstances of your passing. Um, and getting to the point, which is, it's good to go to something like what <clears throat> Echo's offering, which are classes, whether it's psychic development or like she, she explains, you know, not channeling, uh, because, you know, you could, you, if, if that is one of your abilities, you can have, uh, maybe you have somebody that you're communicating with. And you have, I'm sure she teaches ways that, you know, your guides protect you or keep certain things away from you. All right. Um, the, you know, those are the kind of, and I guess because sometimes people go in there and they start doing things with um, communicating with the dead, which is, you know, at, from the beginning, it sounds kind of fun. Uh, but... And a lot of times nothing really ever comes of it, but sometimes things like that can, if you don't know what you're doing, at the very least, if you don't know how to protect yourself, all right, um, can get you into a, 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 a lot of trouble. And you know what? And the reason why I say this is a lot of people are misled by the Hollywood version of when, you know, they get an attachment or a haunting and they think, oh, you know what? I, I, you know, I don't have pieces of furniture flying around my house or... None of the other stuff, these extreme uh, examples of what people see in movies as to, okay, but sometimes um, attachments of this nature are very subtle, much more subtle than what you see in the movies. And they get incremental. Uh, look at her. Here she was. She had these headaches and she, she did not have the awareness to realize that she, she had an attachment of this spirit lady half in her in half. Everybody else was, especially the lady she went to see, but she herself is thinking, man, I'm on a two-day headache and it's only on one side of my, of my, you know, my head. But she didn't, she wasn't aware. It's, this pain is not originating with me. It's originating with so-and-so, whoever so-and-so was. So, you know, check out her, check out her school. All right. And, and of course, with the advances of internet, you know, there's a, Things, wonderful things can be done online. You know, you don't have to be, you know, once upon a time in a galaxy far, far away, you had to actually physically go someplace for a class, whether it was a psychic development class or anything like that. But now with online courses, you know, it opens up the doors to a lot of things as far as um, learning things. You know, I personally, I believe that, especially when it comes to psychic training, online will only take you so far you know there's just something 
I don't know, more, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? More conclusive is when you actually are in person with somebody who's trying to teach you something. As far as, um, you know, when, when you're feeling certain things or not feeling certain things, that kind of deal. But hey, whatever. Anyway, guys, I hope you like the show. I love speaking to Echo Bodine. Okay, she's got. She's been. Believe me, that lady. I. I. I've heard of Echo for many, many, many years, long before I ever thought of having stories of the supernatural. I had heard of Echo Bodine. She has been around for quite some time. Okay, and I thought it was so interesting to hear how she got started in this field. Okay. Um. So go check out her website, the book, the classes, whatever the case might be. And again, coming from somebody who's been doing paranormal research for many, many, many years, okay, if, you know, if you really want to get into that field, whether it's just to do psychic development or you thinking, hey, I'm going to, I want to maybe join some type of paranormal team, let me tell you something. There's, this is, I would say this is step one before you go into anything having to do with the paranormal that you should do, whether psychic development or ways that you know you you learn how to listen to your intuition which by the way let's step out of the uh you know the, the the intuition that intuition is the same one that will serve you when let's say you go into paranormal research or going to cases that intuition is the one that's going to serve you to tell you be careful there's something here that's like you gotta be careful with this all right and by the way, sometimes this doesn't register on the equipment, all these gadgets and stuff that you see nowadays that they bring along to paranormal investigations. Or, or let's say they, it, you know the little light thing goes off and the guy go meter and the that and that and goes off and brings. Sometimes your intuition will tell you, yeah, there's something here, but you better be careful because whatever it is is malevolent or something really dark. All right, there is no none of these gadgets will tell you. Hey, that entity, it's not just the dead guy, all right? And some of them, they don't know how to tell you that's a really dark spirit. That is a really dark spirit, and you've got to be careful about it. The only thing that steps in and will give you the heads up on that is your intuition, period, all right? You can get all these different instruments, and I've worked with all of them, by the way where yeah it'll light up or it'll show you a stick figure or you know uh whatever even photographs there's nothing there nothing that tells you what type of entity you're really dealing with what's there what is this it's human non-human is if it's human it's a very dark human a very dark spirit only your intuition tells you be careful or Pull, put on, you know, what I call your suit of, you know, you know, like suit up, which is calling, you know, your guardians, angels, you name it, like get them in here and I quit because I've just realized that I'm in a case where there's really something dark or malevolent going on. All right. Or um, you might even get that if you have uh, an entity that suffer from mental illness in life, if they're still stuck, they might still still be displaying some of their mental illness, especially if there was violence involved in their personality. Okay, that's why you get some scenarios of hauntings which are, you know, very disturbing. It's because you're dealing not with the demonic or an inhuman spirit, you're dealing with a human spirit that in life this person was disturbed for a variety of reasons. So anyway, yeah, let me get off my soapbox. I have a lot of great guests coming on. I will be doing the live stream for Halloween. Don't forget to catch me on eerie.news. And also, please, uh, I will be giving out more information about the new book, of, uh, The Phantoms of the Follies, that, like I said, I'm hoping to release now for October. But I will give you guys a heads up with the ISBN, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And hopefully, even after that, I will probably, hopefully, be doing a giveaway on the book, whether it's the ebook or the physical book. I'm not sure yet. So, until then, guys, do not forget, you can go to Miami Ghost Chronicles. And you're going to find um, links just about everything, okay? You're going to find, um, 
I've got stuff there for the podcast, the videos, videos not only on YouTube, everywhere that have a video. Um, and like I said, if you uh, want to listen to any of the podcast versions of any of the shows, okay, I have links that you can listen on the browser or download the MP3 file without commercial interruptions. And I have the entire library of all my shows dating back. A lot of the platforms after a while, the older shows will drop off. All right. But I have, you know, if you go to MiamiGhostChronicles.com, you're going to find that I have all of them dating back to about five or six years. All right. Of all the shows. All right. So don't forget. Until then, thank you so much for being part of my audience and I look forward to the next time we meet again. Take care.